her top here, and these are 100 finds of archaeologists captured on camera. Women are not allowed to see this mask. Oxford University's Pitt Rivers Museum has removed from display a wooden mask made by the Igbo people of Nigeria. According to the beliefs of this people, the mask is forbidden to be seen by women and only men are allowed to use it during ceremonies and rituals. The museum posted a cultural safety warning sign and removed the image of the mask from its website. The Igbo mask has deep cultural significance, symbolizing spiritual strength and protecting the tribe's traditions. It was used exclusively by men, which emphasizes its importance in religious and social rituals. Art critic Ruth Millington noted that denying all women access to an artifact because of one culture's taboo is an extreme measure. She believes that women should have the right to decide for themselves whether they want to see a mask, familiarizing themselves with its cultural characteristics. The Sultan's Treasure the Hell's Well, or Barhuda Hole, is a mysterious sinkhole in Yemen surrounded by legends and myths. Locals believe that the Sultan's treasure was at the bottom of the well guarded by genies and the dead and that a graveyard smell emanated from there. Scientific research has confirmed some of these legends. Speleologists finally decided to explore the sinkhole, taking samples from its bottom. The sinkhole is cone-shaped. Its diameter at the surface is about 30 meters and widens to 120 meters at the bottom. The depth of the well is 112 meters. The upper layer is porous, allowing water to pass through, and below the layer becomes denser and impermeable, which leads to the formation of four waterfalls and stalagmites. The Sultan's treasure turned out to be cave pearls, rare formations of calcium carbonate that form around a grain of sand or a piece of wood. In Barkat, they are emerald golden in color, which probably misled ancient observers. Snakes and arthropods live at the bottom of the funnel. The grave smell described by locals is caused by the decomposing bodies of animals, mainly birds, which fly into the well in search of shelter from the heat. Having sunk to the bottom, they cannot fly back up because of the great depth. There are two main hypotheses about the origin of the well. The first is that it is a former crater of an underground volcano that has long since died out. The second is that it is a natural well formed by the leaching of underground layers of water over millions of years. Most likely, the Barkett well was formed in the second way, which explains its unusual structure and content. Mysterious Accessory from the Future Archaeologists have discovered wall carvings depicting objects similar to modern handbags. Some of these images are about 12,000 years old. The earliest were found in Turkey in the ruins of the megalithic temple of Gobekli Tepe where strange images are engraved on the columns of the ancient temple. Similar motifs have been discovered in Mexico, Iraq, and South America, raising many questions about the possible use of such objects by ancient civilizations. Although the images resemble handbags or clutches, experts believe the ancient ruins are more likely to depict baskets. Some believe that the concept of a handbag may have been invented by ancient civilizations. The first modern bag appeared in 1841 in England, created by Samuel Parkinson. The problem is that the Gobekli Tepe Temple was built in 9000 BC and its builders could hardly have known about such an accessory. Another ancient example of a handbag was found in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs written about 5000 years ago where the gods hold a small square object symbolizing prosperity. Archaeologists have indeed found remains of baskets and tool bags used by the ancient Egyptians but they cannot yet say for sure what is depicted in the hieroglyphs. Similar discoveries were made in Iraq, among the ruins of an Assyrian palace built between 883 and 859 BC, which depicts a genie with wings holding what appears to be a handbag. Historian David Miano believes that these figures, called Apkalu, were minor deities who carried water buckets made from sacred date palms rather than purses. Ancient buckets similar to the engravings were actually found in Iraq. Similar motifs have also been found in Mexico among Toltec ruins, where giant statues hold objects resembling handbags. These statues were created around 750 AD. Rosetta Stone One of the greatest archaeological finds that revealed to the world the key to deciphering ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs is the Rosetta Stone. It was discovered by Officer Pierre-Francois Bouchard in July 1799 during Napoleon's campaign in Egypt. The stone immediately attracted attention due to its unique trilingual inscription, 
This Granodiorite block contained a decree dating back to 196 BC during the reign of King Ptolemy V Epiphanes. The inscription was written in three languages, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs at the top, Demotic script, a simplified script popular at the time, in the middle, and ancient Greek at the bottom. The uniqueness of the stone was that the Greek text was the key to deciphering the other two. French scientist Jean-Francois Champollion completed the deciphering process in 1822, which was a revolutionary breakthrough in Egyptology. The Rosetta Stone provided insight into ancient Egyptian culture, religion, and history that had previously been hidden behind unreadable hieroglyphs. Although this is one of the most important discoveries in the history of archaeology, there are even more important archaeological discoveries to come. Tried to Treat Cancer A study of two ancient skulls yielded surprising results. They showed signs of cancer and traces of attempts to treat it. These findings show that the ancient Egyptians knew about cancer and tried to fight it. Signs of this disease included severe tissue destruction and small metastases. Particularly interesting are the cut marks around the lesions, suggesting that the Egyptians may have attempted to remove the tumors surgically. The ancient Egyptians were famous for their medical knowledge. They knew how to treat fractures, treat injuries, make prosthetics, and even fill teeth. However, their ability to treat cancer was limited. Scientists studied two skulls from the Duckworth Collection at the University of Cambridge. One skull belonged to a 30, 35-year-old man with signs of cancer and surgical interventions. The other skull belonged to a woman over 50 years old with cancerous lesions and signs of healed injuries. The researchers stressed that studying ancient remains is fraught with difficulties, with incomplete skeletons and a lack of clinical history making conclusions difficult. However, these findings provide new insights into ancient medical practices and highlight the need for further research in paleontology. The Oldest Liquid Wine Spanish scientists have discovered a glass urn containing cremated remains and a liquid that turns out to be the oldest known wine in an ancient Roman underground mausoleum in Carmona. The age of the find is about 2,000 years. Carmona, located in Andalusia, was a major city in the Roman province of Baetica in the first centuries AD. The city preserves the ruins of an amphitheater and necropolis, where archaeological discoveries are still ongoing. In 2019, archaeologists found the entrance to an underground tomb believed to have belonged to a wealthy family. Inside, they found eight urn niches, six of which contained cremated remains. One of the glass urns also contained a gold ring with an image of Janus and a red liquid. Chemical analysis confirmed that this is wine that has changed color due to chemical processes over 2,000 years. The use of wine in Roman funeral rituals is well documented. Wine was added to the urn after cremated remains were placed to aid the deceased in the afterlife. This find is an important evidence of Roman customs and confirmation of the longevity of their traditions. Previously, other interesting artifacts were found in the mausoleum, such as an ancient Roman ungventarium with the remains of a perfusion de dedemder, tomb made from patchouli essential oil. Traces of a disappeared culture Venezuelan archaeologists have discovered 20 new sites with rock art dating back thousands of years. These drawings found in Canaima National Park belong to a previously unknown culture. The red pigment designs include geometric motifs such as dots, crosses, stars, and lines, as well as stylized images of leaves and human figures. Some images are carved into stone, making them petroglyphs. The purpose of these drawings remains a mystery. They could be associated with birth, illness, renewal of nature, or hunting. Rock art sites were probably important because of their location, just as the sites of churches and mosques are to us today. The exact age of the drawings is still unknown, but they are believed to be about 4,000 years old, similar to similar drawings in Brazil. However, scientists believe that the Venezuelan finds may be more ancient. Canaima National Park is a huge area of forests and parks the size of Belgium. One of its most famous attractions is Angel Falls, the tallest waterfall in the world. Researchers speculate that the park may have been the center of the emergence of this mysterious culture, which later spread throughout the Amazon, Guiana, and southern Colombia, where there are similar cave paintings. The Qumran Scrolls These ancient Jewish manuscripts were discovered between 1946 and 1956 in the caves of Qumran, near the Dead Sea, and revolutionized our understanding of the religious and cultural life of the Second Temple period. 
The texts cover the period from the 3rd century BC to the 1st century AD and include some of the earliest known versions of biblical books as well as extra-biblical and deuterocanonical texts including liturgical, apocalyptic, and legal documents. The biblical manuscripts are especially valuable as they allow us to trace the development of the text of Scripture and provide unique comparative material for analyzing changes in religious texts of the time. These scrolls include fragments of almost all the books of the Old Testament except for the Book of Esther, as well as texts that were previously unknown or lost. The scrolls were likely created or preserved by the Essene community living in the Qumran area. Today, most of the scrolls are kept in the Shrine of the Book at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, and their study continues. Ancient Multiplication Table Archaeologists have discovered a fragment of a wooden tablet with one of the oldest multiplication tables in Japan in the ruins of the Fujiwara Palace in the Japanese prefecture of Nara. The age of the find is about 1300 years. The ruins of the Fujiwara Palace are the remains of an ancient capital that existed until 710 when the capital moved to Nara. The tablet was found at the site of what is believed to be the Amon Fu guard post in the Fujiwara government. The size of the find is 16.2 centimeters by 1.2 centimeters. Researchers believe that it was part of a more complete multiplication table, which dates back to the late 7th or early 8th century. Even then, such tables were used in government agencies. Using infrared analysis, the following equations were deciphered from the tablet. All the inscriptions are written in kanji, Chinese characters that are also used in modern Japanese. The multiplication table begins with multiplication by 9 and contains 5 equations written horizontally in one line. If the tablet were intact, its length would be about 33 centimeters. This 5-line writing style corresponds to Chinese styles from the Qin and Han dynasties. The tablet was likely used by the Amon Fu office, which was responsible for security and administrative tasks, including counting workdays and taxes. Paths for the Dead Archaeologists from the University of Aberdeen have discovered hundreds of previously unknown prehistoric sites in Ireland, including five Stone Age structures used to mark the path of the dead to the afterlife. These discoveries were made in County Wicklow, where the use of LIDAR allowed detailed 3D models of the landscape to be created. The area where the research was carried out was inhabited from the early Neolithic to the late Bronze Age. Scientists have discovered five long, narrow structures called cursuses, ranging from 150 to 400 meters in length, which are considered rare in Ireland. These structures served as paths for the dead, showing souls the path to the afterlife. Interestingly, four of the five cursuses are oriented according to the satlic movements of the sun, two of which indicate sunrise on the summer solstice and the other two on the autumn equinox. Three cursus are located next to the funerary complexes, which further supports the theory about their role in funeral processions and the path of souls to their ancestors. These prehistoric sites remain among the most mysterious in Ireland and the UK, as no artifacts have been found near them to reveal more about their function. Ancient Wolf from Permafrost During an expedition in Siberia, an incredible discovery was made. An ancient wolf, surprisingly well-preserved in permafrost. The discovered carcass of a wolf at a depth of about 40 meters near the Terektyak River in the Abyeski region of Yakutia was transferred to the Mammoth Museum in Yakutsk for further research. The condition of the wolf amazed scientists. After 44,000 years, fur, bones, organs, and even terrifying teeth were preserved. Experts are calling the discovery unprecedented because it is the oldest known wolf to undergo a necropsy. They hope that studying the stomach and other organs will shed light on the wolf's diet and environment. The stomach remained isolated and free of contaminants, providing an instant snapshot of ancient Pleistocene biota. Examination of its contents can reveal not only what the wolf ate, but also its prey. Judging by the wear of the teeth and the development of the sagittal ridge, it has already been established that this is an adult male. The study of ancient bacteria could help in the development of new drugs and biotech products, highlighting the enormous significance of this discovery for the future. This discovery not only reveals the secrets of the ancient world, but also opens up new horizons for science and medicine. Pompeii This is one of the most famous ancient cities that were tragically destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. 
Situated near modern-day Naples, it, along with the neighboring cities of Herculaneum and Stabiae, were buried under a thick layer of volcanic ash and pumice, four to six meters high. This catastrophic event completely destroyed the city, but due to the fact that the ash preserved many buildings and artifacts, Pompeii has been preserved almost exactly as it was at the time of destruction. Today, Pompeii offers a unique opportunity to see the life of an ancient Roman city. Streets, houses, temples, amphitheaters, and shops have been preserved in amazing detail. Also preserved are plaster casts of the bodies of residents and animals made by archaeologists. After organic materials such as bodies decomposed, voids were formed in the layers of ash. By filling them with plaster, archaeologists recreated the poses of people in their last moments of life. One of the most famous monuments is the Garden of the Fugitives, where you can see 13 such casts capturing the tragic moments of an escape attempt. This is truly considered one of the most unique places on our planet. Hobbit Remains Thorin, as archaeologists have nicknamed him, lived about 40, 50,000 years ago at a time when the last Neanderthals were disappearing from the face of the earth. His remains were found in a cave in the south of France, where he probably hid from the bitter cold. In 2015, archaeologists discovered a well-preserved fossilized jaw with 31 teeth and finger bones. Interestingly, Thorin's teeth, despite being worn down from active chewing, were in good condition. Analysis showed that he was an adult male, probably quite young, since Neanderthals lived on average about 20 years. The most striking thing was the genetic study. Thorin's DNA was very different from all known Neanderthal samples. This indicates an isolated population that separated from the rest of the Neanderthals about 100, 105,000 years ago. It is curious that just 10 days' walk from this cave, there lived another community of Neanderthals, but judging by the analysis, they did not communicate. Researchers speculate on how Neanderthals perceived the world and why they were so isolated. Uncommunication was their characteristic feature. At the time of their existence, there were about 10,000 Neanderthals in the world, and over hundreds of thousands of years, they became unsociable. They had a high inbreeding rate, which is confirmed by many congenital anomalies. Finding one of the last Neanderthals is a huge success. Isotopes in the bones confirm that Thorn lived in the harsh climate of the Ice Age. Scientists are still arguing about why the Neanderthals disappeared because of the harsh climate or competition with the Cro-Magnons. Anthropologists believe that climate was not a decisive factor because the Ice Ages began long before their disappearance. Probably the more developed Cro-Magnons displaced them. Cro-Magnons were not against interbreeding, and the genome of modern humans contains an admixture of Neanderthals, while no traces of sapiens have been found in Neanderthals. Interestingly, a fragment of bone with a scratched picture, possibly depicting a mammoth, was recently found in the Bryansk region in Russia. This is a rare example that indicates the presence of fine art among Neanderthals, while Cro-Magnons left many works. The Largest Snake in the World if you suffer from ophidiophobia, the fear of snakes, then it is better to skip this fragment of the video. And for everyone else, welcome to the world of paleontological discoveries in India. Well, a team of scientists from the Indian Institute of Technology Roorkee made an amazing discovery. Researchers accidentally found fossils of a giant ancient reptile. Imagine a snake 15 meters long and weighing one ton that lived in what is now India 47 million years ago. This species is named Vasuki indicus after the mythological snake king from Hindu mythology associated with the god Shiva. This snake turned out to be larger even than the Colombian Titanoboa, which was previously considered the largest snake in the world. The remains of Titanoboa were discovered in Colombia in 2009, and it lived about 60 million years ago. Despite its impressive size, Vasuki indicus was not poisonous. It killed its victims by squeezing them, like modern anacondas and pythons. Vasuki indicus was a slow-moving ambush predator that lived in marshy areas near the coast during a period when global temperatures were significantly higher than today. The fossils were found in an area that is now dry and dusty, but the presence of a large aquatic predator indicates it was once swampland. Altamira Cave In the province of Cantabria, Spain is one of the most famous caves with prehistoric art in the world. These polychrome cave paintings, which are between 15000 and 36000 years old, belong to the Magdalenian culture of the late Paleolithic. 
The walls of the cave depict realistic scenes of animals such as bison, horses, and deer made with charcoal and natural pigments. In addition to the animals, there are also human handprints, which gives this place not only artistic but also deep symbolic value. The cave was accidentally discovered in 1868 by a local resident, Modesto Cubias, but it gained worldwide fame thanks to the research of Marcelino Sanz de Sautuola in the late 19th century. His work helped convince the world that these works of art were created by prehistoric man. Because for a long time, scientists believed that these drawings were modern. The Altamira Cave offers a unique insight into the art and life of ancient people. The complexity and expressiveness of the drawings testify to the advanced culture and creativity of the primitive artists. Access to the original cave is currently restricted to preserve these unique works, but there is a museum nearby with an exact copy of the drawings, allowing visitors to experience the grandeur of this ancient gallery. Secrets of the Underworld of Agartha the legend of the underground world of Agartha has always attracted the attention of those who sought hidden knowledge and secret civilizations. The Nazis showed great interest in the myth of Agartha, a supposedly deep underground state inhabited by an advanced civilization with mystical knowledge and advanced technology. It was believed that the inhabitants of Agartha could possess the secrets of immortality, energy, and world control which interested the Nazi elite. Some Nazi ideologists saw in Agartha not only a source of ancient knowledge, but also a possible refuge for the elite of the Third Reich in the event of defeat on the surface. According to the theory, this underground world could provide a reliable shelter and create conditions for the revival of Nazi power. Legends claim that the entrance to Agartha was hidden somewhere in the Himalayas or other hard-to-reach regions of the Earth. Ananirba researchers, obsessed with finding Aryan roots and ancient civilizations, organized expeditions to different parts of the world, including Tibet and Antarctica, in search of an entrance to the underworld. Despite the lack of concrete evidence of Agartha's existence, the Nazis continued to fund these projects, hoping to gain access to mystical knowledge that could change the course of the war and increase their influence. Large-Scale Horse Burials French archaeologists recently made a surprising discovery in villiers sur indre discovering nine large burials containing the remains of horses that lived about 2,000 years ago. The burials contained 28 horses, carefully placed on their right sides with their heads facing south. The remains of two dogs were found nearby with their heads facing west. These finds date back to the period of the Gallic Wars, approximately between 100 BC and 100 AD, when Julius Caesar was actively engaged in military operations. The burials attracted the attention of archaeologists for their features. The horses, only 1.2 meters tall, were typical of Gallic breeds. The method of their burial was similar to those previously found in other regions of France, indicating a possible ritual or ceremonial nature. Interestingly, all the horses found were adults, which rules out common diseases as the cause of their death. Scientists from France's National Institute for Preventive Archaeological Research are analyzing the bones to determine whether the horses died in battle or were part of an elaborate ritual. To solve the mystery, researchers took DNA samples from the bones and surrounding sediments to determine whether the horses were Gallic or used by Roman units. Tomb of Tutankhamun this discovery became one of the most famous archaeological finds of the 20th century. It is the final resting place of the young pharaoh who ruled Egypt from 1332 to 1323 BC during the 18th dynasty. Unlike other royal tombs, its size and decoration are quite modest, which is probably due to the unexpected death of Tutankhamun at a young age. Perhaps this tomb was not originally intended for the pharaoh, but was adapted for him due to lack of time. Despite its modest size, the tomb surprised researchers with the number and magnificence of the burial items. Among the finds were gold jewelry, household items, a throne, furniture, clothing, and of course, the famous golden burial mask of Tutankhamun, which became a symbol of ancient Egyptian culture. In total, more than 5,000 artifacts were found, each of which helped to reveal important details about the life and death of the pharaohs. The tomb was discovered in 1922 by British archaeologist Howard Carter and his team. Their discovery caused quite a stir around the world not only because of the enormous amount of wealth, but also because of the exceptional preservation of the artifacts, which shed light on the reign of Tutankhamun. 
The most important difference between Tutankhamun's tomb and all others is its preservation. It has been preserved in its original form. This discovery was a landmark event in Egyptology and remains one of the most important archaeological discoveries of all time. Let's hope it is not the last. Scientists brewed an ancient drink. Israeli researchers decided to plunge into the world of experimental archaeology and create a drink that our ancestors drank. It all started with the discovery of yeast residues in ancient clay shards during excavations in Israel. These specimens, dating back to 3000 BC, were found in various locations, including Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and an Egyptian brewery near the Gaza Strip. Archaeologists and microbiologists have teamed up to study and resurrect ancient yeast. Researchers were able to bring yeast colonies back to life and use them to create an ancient drink that tastes like the beer that the Philistines and Egyptians drank. For the experiment, scientists used recipes for ancient drinks, creating beer and mead. Some modern changes were made to the brewing process, such as the addition of hops, which were not present in the ancient Near East. This made it possible to create a drink with a unique taste, combining ancient traditions and modern technologies. According to Shmuel Naki, a brewer at the Jerusalem Beer Center, the drink tasted spicy, a little fruity, and very complex. Yeast played a key role in creating these flavor characteristics, confirming the importance of its use in brewing. The success of this experiment inspired scientists and brewers to further research. The team's plans include using the revived yeast to create new types of beer based on ancient recipes. This cooperation will not only expand the line of Israeli beer, but also provide a deeper understanding of the culture and traditions of ancient peoples. Second Tibetan Denisovan a team of scientists examined materials found in the Tibetan Baishaya cave and discovered an ancient rib. Paleoproteomic analysis showed that it belonged to a Denisovan who lived about 48, 32,000 years ago. Basic information about Denisovans is known from a few finds. Most of the fossils were found in Denisova Cave, after which this species of ancient people was named. Outside this cave, Denisovans were first identified in Tibet when protein fragments from a fragment of a 160 000 year old mandible found in 1980 were analyzed. Later, Denisovan DNA was also found in sediments from younger layers of this cave. The tooth of another representative of this paleo population was excavated in Laos. Scientists from Denmark, China, and France have studied the Tibetan Baishi Ya Cave. At this high-altitude site, located at an altitude of 3,280 meters, they found many artifacts and animal remains, indicating that archaic people had visited the cave over many thousands of years. Among the more than 2,500 animal bones and teeth found in the cave were blue sheep, yaks, Tibetan gazelles, and horses. The bones of an ancient hyena, gray wolf, snow leopard, pheasant, and golden eagle were also identified. Anthropogenic traces were found on almost 20% of the bones. During excavations, archaeologists discovered a fragment of a rib more than 5 centimeters long, which fell into two parts. Biomolecular analysis showed that the fossil belonged to a Denisovan. Dating by cultural layer determined the age of the find at 3248,000 years, indicating that the Denisovans visited the Baishia cave for more than 100,000 years. Knossos the Greek island of Crete is home to some of the greatest archaeological sites from the Bronze Age. This ancient city was a key center of the Minoan civilization, which flourished from around 2000 to 1400 BC and is where most of the events of ancient Greek myths took place. The most famous of these is the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur, which claims that the palace at Knossos contained a labyrinth in which the monstrous Minotaur lived before being defeated by the hero Theseus. Knossos, located near the modern city of Heraklion, is often cited as the oldest city in Europe. Its centerpiece is the palace, built in a complex architectural style that included numerous rooms, ceremonial halls, storage facilities, and even a water supply system. Although the palace bears the name of King Minos, archaeologists believe that it was not exclusively a royal residence, but played an important role as an administrative, economic, and religious center. The Palace of Knossos is striking in its scale and complex layout, which evoked associations with the labyrinth of myths. Impressive frescoes depicting scenes from the life of the Minoans, as well as unique artifacts found during excavations, provide valuable insight into the life and culture of this mysterious civilization. Today, Knossos is an important tourist attraction and a symbol of ancient Crete. Ancient Roman Coins in Israel 
A recent discovery by archaeologists in Lod, central Israel, provides invaluable insight into the life of Jews in the ancient Roman era. During excavations, impressive stone and marble artifacts, inscriptions in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, and a treasure of 94 coins were found among the ruins of the building. These finds, especially the absence of pig bones among the animal remains, indicate the building's connection to the Jewish community. Experts date the find to the time of the Jewish uprising against Constantius Gallus in 351, 354 AD. Historians claim that the treasure was hidden during the uprising. Written evidence of these events is scanty, but it is known that large Jewish communities such as Lod, Zippori, and Tiberias were destroyed by Roman troops. Two excavation experts, Shahar Crispin and Moore Wiesel, noted that the building likely served as a home for the city's elders. It was destroyed to the very foundation, which demonstrates the strength and brutality of the suppression of the uprising. According to experts, this is the only evidence of the scale of the uprising in Lod. This site was the most important Jewish center after the destruction of the Second Temple in Jerusalem. The building destroyed to the foundation confirms the significance of the uprising and its suppression. The findings prove that Lod is one of the oldest cities in the world with a rich Jewish heritage from the Tanaitic period where the authors of the Mishnah lived. It is still difficult to determine the exact purpose of the building, a synagogue, an educational institution, or a meeting place for elders. However, the size of the building, treasure, and other finds correspond to the description of Lod in Jewish and non-Jewish sources where it appears as the center of Jewish life in the era of the Mishnah and Talmud. Antikythera Mechanism It is impossible not to mention the most unique archaeological discovery, which many consider to be the first known analog computer, the Antikythera Mechanism. This complex device was created to predict astronomical events such as planetary positions and solar eclipses, and could track cycles including the four-year period of the Olympic Games. It also allowed for the accurate calculation of lunar phases and solar years. Its functionality and complexity are astounding, considering that it was created more than 2,000 years ago between 150 and 100 BC. The Antikythera mechanism was discovered in 1901 in the wreckage of an ancient ship that sank near the Greek island of Antikythera. Its discovery was a real sensation, since the mechanism consists of many bronze gears and wheels, which makes it incredibly complex for its time. The largest gear in the device has a diameter of about 13 centimeters, and the overall design indicates a high level of skill of ancient engineers. Scientists continue to study the artifact to this day, using modern technology such as X-rays and 3D scanning to uncover all of its functions. The Antikythera mechanism is considered evidence that the ancient Greeks possessed knowledge and technology that was lost for centuries after. Stone Map of the Night Sky Italian scientists discovered an ancient celestial map, which is about 2,500 years old, on the territory of the ancient fortress of Castellere di Rupin Piccolo in the province of Trieste. This discovery may be the oldest celestial map found in Italy. Castellare di Rupin Piccolo served as a defensive structure between 1800 and 1650 BC. Among the artifacts are two round stones with a diameter of 50 centimeters. One of them, which has a single round cutout, supposedly depicts the sun. Another stone, according to experts, is a celestial map that shows the starry sky above the fortress in the 4th century BC. The stone is engraved with images of constellations including Cassiopeia, Orion, Scorpius, and the Pleiades. Using computer modeling, scientists found that in those days, the star Theta Scorpii could be observed from the fortress, which is now not visible from there. The artifacts were created approximately 2,400 years ago by one person using a hammer and a rough metal chisel with a 6-7mm tip. The tool found nearby is today on display at the Mugia Archaeological Museum. Bosnian Pyramids Mysterious structures have been discovered in Bosnia that, according to some researchers, may be ancient structures dating back about 12,000 years. These massive formations first came to the attention of archaeologists and enthusiasts in the early 2000s when they were pointed out by Bosnian archaeologist and businessman Samir Osmanagic. He claims that the pyramids were created by an ancient civilization and are much older than the known pyramids in Egypt. The complex consists of several pyramidal structures, including the Pyramid of the Sun, Moon, and Dragon. The Pyramid of the Sun is the largest and reaches a height of about 220 meters, making it one of the tallest pyramids in the world. 
Osmanagic and his team conducted extensive research, including ground-penetrating radar scans and excavations, claiming to have discovered traces of ancient tunnels and stone blocks that indicate the pyramids were man-made. However, not all scientists agree with this point of view. Many geologists and archaeologists argue that these structures are natural formations formed as a result of geological processes. They indicate that the geological structure of the region and the shape of the pyramids can be explained by natural forces such as erosion and tectonic movements. They remain one of the most mysterious and debated finds in modern archaeology. Olduvai Gorge Tanzania is home to one of the most important paleoanthropological sites on Earth playing a key role in understanding the evolution of early humans. The site contains extensive evidence of ancient hominin activity dating back more than two million years. The numerous sites and tools discovered here have given scientists a unique opportunity to study the development of early human cultures and their social structures. One of the most valuable finds at Olduvai Gorge are the stone tools that allow us to trace the technological progress of ancient hominins. These tools, used for hunting and butchering animals, as well as for processing plants, indicate the beginnings of complex social and economic life. In addition to the tools, archaeologists have found animal remains with clear signs of hunting and processing, indicating that prey was hunted and processed for further use. The Most Dangerous Manuscript in the World Marie Curie is a famous experimental scientist, an outstanding chemist, and a radioactivity researcher who received two Nobel Prizes, one in 1903 in physics, the second in 1911 in chemistry. But why are her notebooks considered dangerous? The answer does not lie in the knowledge they contain. Marie Curie, together with her husband Pierre Curie, discovered the radioactive elements polonium and radium and developed methods for isolating radioactive isotopes. When scientists discovered radium, they had no idea about its harm to the body. Therefore, no protective measures were taken. Samples of the substance were carried in pockets and stored without precautions. Marie Curie died in 1934 from aplastic anemia, a blood disease caused by radiation. Many of the scientists who worked with her also died of leukemia and other radiation-related diseases. While working in the laboratory, Curie received a huge dose of radiation and became radioactive herself. After her death, she was buried in a lead coffin that blocks radiation. Personal belongings, including notebooks, were transferred to the National Library of France, where they are stored in lead boxes, as they remain radioactive. Today, access to Marie Curie's notebooks is difficult. To view her manuscripts, you must sign a disclaimer form at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France and obtain permission. Viewing of records takes place in a special room, away from other reading rooms of the library. The visitor must wear a protective suit and use a dosimeter. Experts have found that the radiation dose for a person in a protective suit working with Curie notebooks is insignificant. Even with regular contact throughout the year, the maximum radiation dose will be about 10 USV microsievert per hour. For comparison, during a flight at an altitude of 10 kilometers, a person receives 5 MSVH. Thus, a two-hour flight from Berlin to Barcelona will give the same radiation dose as a year of working with Curie notebooks. The Curie notebooks remain the most dangerous known manuscripts due to radioactivity. Reading them without a protective suit is extremely dangerous. Marie Curie's personal belongings will not be touched without protection for about 1,500 years, since the half-life of radium-226 is 1,600 years. Hagar Chim The Hagar Chim Temple in Malta is one of the most ancient and impressive megalithic structures, dating back to the Gantija phase of 3,600-3,200 BC. Situated on a hill overlooking the Mediterranean Sea, this temple complex represents one of the most important archaeological evidences of ancient civilizations that existed long before the construction of the pyramids in Egypt and Stonehenge in England. Hagar Kim and other megalithic temples of Malta have been recognized as unique masterpieces of architecture. The temple is built from massive stone blocks, some of which weigh up to 20 tons. The complex has a crescent-shaped facade, which is typical for Maltese temples of that era. Architectural features include internal halls, niches, and altars, which indicate the ritual and religious function of this structure. 
Statues symbolizing fertility were found inside the temples. An interesting detail of Hajar Chim is its orientation. The temple is designed in such a way that on the day of the summer solstice, the first rays of the sun penetrate through the central entrance and illuminate the interior of the complex. This fact points to the astronomical knowledge of the ancient builders and their deep connection with natural cycles. Disappearance of the Gold Reserve one of the most intriguing mysteries of World War II is the mysterious disappearance of the Third Reich's gold reserves. In the final days of Nazi Germany, when defeat was inevitable, the leadership of the Third Reich actively exported gold, jewelry, and other valuables, trying to hide them from the advancing troops of the Soviet Army and their allies. There are numerous accounts of huge amounts of gold and other treasures being hidden in various places throughout Europe, including abandoned mines, mountain fortresses, and underground bunkers. However, most of these treasures have never been found, which has given rise to many legends and theories. Some of them claim that the Nazis used ancient magical rituals and occult knowledge to protect their treasures. According to these theories, the riches were not simply hidden, but surrounded by magical barriers or protective spells, making them inaccessible to outsiders. One of the most famous cases is the story of the Lake Toplitz Gold in Austria. Legend has it that the Nazis dumped containers of gold at the bottom of this hard-to-reach mountain lake, and the search for these treasures continues to this day. Castles and bunkers in Bavaria and the Czech Republic are also mentioned, where other valuables could have been hidden. Despite decades of searching, the bulk of the Third Reich's gold reserves have still not been found, and the controversy surrounding its location continues to excite history buffs and treasure hunters. Terracotta Army China's most remarkable archaeological discovery was not the Great Wall, but a vast collection of terracotta sculptures depicting the army of Qin Shi Huang, China's first emperor. The sculptures were created as part of the emperor's funerary complex, built to protect him in the afterlife and continue his rule after his death. Composed of thousands of individually crafted figures of warriors, horses, and chariots, the terracotta army dates back to 210-209 BC. The army was discovered in 1974 when farmers in Lintong County, near the city of Xi'an in Shanxi province, accidentally uncovered fragments of the statues while digging a well. Archaeological excavations that began shortly thereafter revealed three huge underground pits that as of 2007 were estimated to contain more than 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots with 520 horses, and 150 cavalry horses. Each soldier has unique facial features and equipment demonstrating the high level of skill of the ancient sculptors. The Terracotta Army is part of the grand burial of Qin Shi Huang, who sought immortality and eternal power. This monument not only represents an example of ancient Chinese funerary art, but also symbolizes the power and ambition of the first emperor of a unified China. Traces of the Gods in the Temple of Aindara in northern Syria, in the arid lands, there is a unique archaeological site of Ain Dara, a complex of buildings around a majestic central temple, which in its characteristics has no analogs. One of its remarkable features is the giant footprints on the threshold, which are up to one meter long, clearly indicating their non-human origin. According to local residents, the traces were left by a deity, and the temple resembles the biblical description of the Temple of Solomon temple dating from the Iron Age of the Syro-Hittite kingdoms, which arose after the collapse of the Hittite Empire around 1180 BC and existed until 700 BC, was opened in 1955. Archaeological excavations have made it possible to study its structure and decoration in more detail. The temple rises on an embankment and is surrounded by a gallery. Its foundation is made up of massive basalt blocks. The walls are decorated with intricate carvings depicting geometric patterns and mythical animals, demonstrating the great skill of its creators. The entrance is guarded by lions and sphinxes carved from stone. However, it has not yet been established to whom exactly the temple was dedicated. There is an assumption that it could be dedicated to the goddess Ishtar, but there is no exact data. Giant human footprints not only confirm the structure's connection with ancient myths and deities, but also emphasize its cultural, religious, and mystical significance. However, in 2018, a huge part of this temple was destroyed by airstrikes. Grave of the Short Horses 
French archaeologists discovered nine large graves containing the remains of 28 six-year-old stallions buried on their right sides with their heads to the south and two dogs with their heads to the west. These finds, radiocarbon dated, date back to the end of the Roman conquest of Gaul and the beginning of the Roman Empire between the 1st century BC and 1st century AD. Experts are considering theories that the animals could have been buried after being killed in battle or as part of an elaborate ritual. The possibility of death from disease is unlikely, since only adult males were found in the graves. The remains are checked for parasites. The graves were found in Villageux sur andre in central France, where the foundations of ancient buildings, ditches, and a medieval road had previously been discovered. The first grave contained ten complete horse skeletons, neatly arranged in two rows. A similar burial was found in 2002 in the Puy de Dome, containing the remains of eight warriors and their horses. Tomb of Philip II of Macedon Discovered in Virginia in northern Greece in the late 1970s, the tomb of Philip II of Macedon is one of the most significant archaeological finds in the history of ancient Macedonia. Situated near the necropolis of the ancient capital of Macedonia, A.G., the tombs are believed to be the final resting place of Philip II, the king of Macedonia and father of the great conqueror Alexander the Great. The tomb is distinguished by the splendor and wealth of the buried artifacts. Archaeologists found weapons, armor, gold, and silver objects, including unique precious ossuaries, vessels for storing cremated remains. One of the ossuaries, decorated with a golden wreath of oak leaves and acorns, contained bones believed to belong to Philip II himself. This discovery not only confirmed ancient descriptions of the greatness of the Macedonian kings, but also provided new information about the cultural and burial rites of the elite of that time. The armor and weapons found near the remains indicate the important role of military affairs in the life of Philip II, who not only strengthened Macedonia, but also prepared the ground for the future conquests of his son, Alexander the Great. Researchers have unraveled the Voynich Manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript has intrigued scientists and cryptographers for more than 600 years. This document, filled with ciphertext and unusual illustrations, gives rise to many hypotheses, from magic spells to obscene texts. But researchers from Macquarie University have concluded that the contents of the manuscript are not only decent, but also contain information that was not for everyone at the beginning of the 15th century. Dr. Keegan Brewer, the study's lead author, says the manuscript is a medieval reference book on gynecology, including information on sex, contraception, and the treatment of gynecological diseases. The encrypted nature of the text suggests that access to this information was sought to be limited to a certain group of readers, women, which is a clear example of gender censorship. The manuscript contains many illustrations of plants, animals, and people, but the researcher's special attention was drawn to the drawings of naked women pointing to their genitals. These images clearly hint at the gynecological focus of the text. Women's secrets, as women's health was called in the Middle Ages, were heavily censored despite extensive study. The patriarchal culture of the era feared the female body and its functions, which was reflected in the medical texts of the time. One of the largest and most enigmatic illustrations known as rosettes may symbolize the generally accepted views on sex and contraception of the time. According to the ideas of that time, the uterus consisted of seven chambers and the vagina had two openings. Perhaps the nine circles in the illustration symbolize these anatomical details. Thus, the Voynich manuscript may not be just a collection of meaningless symbols or a joke, as some have suggested, but an important historical document revealing approaches to women's health in medieval Europe. The Staffordshire Hoard This is the largest find of Anglo-Saxon gold and silver artifacts discovered to date. The astonishing collection includes around 4,600 objects and fragments weighing over 5.1 kilograms of gold and 1.4 kilograms of silver, as well as over 3,500 pieces of Garnet Cloisonne jewelry. The items include military equipment, jewelry, and religious artifacts, demonstrating the high skill of Anglo-Saxon craftsmen and the wealth of those who owned them. The hoard was discovered in 2009 using a metal detector in a field near the village of Hammerwich, near Lichfield in Staffordshire, England. 
Archaeologists believe the treasure was buried between 650 and 675 AD, although some items may be older dating back to the 6th or 7th centuries. The Staffordshire hoard includes many military items, such as gold fragments of swords and helmets, indicating the importance of military culture at the time. Of particular value are the religious artifacts found, which indicate the spread of Christianity in Anglo-Saxon Britain. Today, the Staffordshire Hoard is exhibited in various museums in England and continues to attract the attention of researchers and history buffs from all over the world. Ancient Image of Psychoactive Mushrooms The Tassili in Eger Cave, located in the southeastern part of Algeria, is a real treasure trove of prehistoric art. This site is known for its rich rock art spanning thousands of years. Particularly noteworthy is a painting created about 9,000 years ago depicting a shaman with psychedelic mushrooms. This unique artifact provides a window into the spiritual and cultural practices of ancient hunter-gatherers. This painting was first documented by French archaeologist Henri Lotte and his team in the 1950s. They were amazed by the brightness and complexity of the images, among which stood out the figure of a shaman with mushrooms of the genus psilocybe, known for their psychoactive properties. The shaman is depicted with an ornate headdress and war paint, indicating his ritual role. The shaman's posture and facial expression clearly demonstrate a state of trance. Psychedelic mushrooms played an important role in shamanic rituals, as evidenced by numerous examples from various cultures. In ancient societies, shamans used mushrooms to achieve an altered state of consciousness and communicate with the spirit world. The Tassili cave paintings indicate that similar practices existed in North Africa. The image of a shaman surrounded by mushrooms and other symbols carries a deep meaning. The headdress and coloring emphasize the high status of the shaman in society, and the mushrooms emphasize their sacred role in rituals. The trance state indicates the shaman's journey beyond the physical world, which was an important part of their spiritual practice. Baghdad Battery A unique and truly enigmatic archaeological artifact discovered in 1936 in the Hujut Rabu area near the ancient city of Ktesiphon in Iraq consists of three components a ceramic vessel, a copper tube, and an iron rod. The find dates back to the Parthian or Sassanid Empire, a creation 150 BC 650 AD, and its purpose remains a mystery. The most intriguing hypothesis was put forward by Wilhelm Koenig, director of the National Museum of Iraq in the 1930s. He suggested that these artifacts could have functioned as an ancient galvanic cell, a prototype battery. According to this theory, an acid or alkali such as wine vinegar could have been poured into the vessel, which would have caused an electric current to flow between the copper and iron. Koenig suggested that such a device could have been used for galvanic coating of metals or even for electrotherapy. However, this theory remains controversial, as there is no direct evidence of the use of the Baghdad battery for such purposes. Alternative versions suggest that the artifact could have simply been a container for storing sacred scrolls or other items and is not related to electricity. Archaeologists and historians still cannot accurately explain the use of the Baghdad battery, Perhaps in the future, this mystery will be revealed. Excalibur of Islamic Origin In 1994, an ancient sword was discovered in Valencia, on the east coast of Spain, the age and origin of which had long remained a mystery. Finally, in honor of the 75th anniversary of the Valencian Department of Archaeology, experts carried out an in-depth analysis of this and other artifacts from their collections. Using modern dating methods, experts have determined that the sword dates back to the 10th century and was made during the Islamic era in Valencia. Finds of such swords in the region are extremely rare due to the characteristics of the local soil, which makes their preservation difficult. The project leader, archaeologist Jose Miguel Osuna, noted that the length of the sword blade is 45 centimeters. A special feature of the weapon is its handle, decorated with bronze plates and notches, which is characteristic of the Islamic period. The absence of a guard and the size of the sword suggest that it belonged to a mounted warrior from the times of the Andalusian Caliphate and also bears the features of a Visigothic weapon. The most luxurious pirate port Port Royal, known as the worst city on earth, was once the wealthiest port in the Caribbean. 
This place was considered a center of luxury and debauchery, where the abundance of alcohol, gambling, and entertainment with women attracted pirates and adventurers from all over the world. However, a sudden earthquake on June 7, 1692 put an end to this splendor, when two-thirds of the city went underwater, taking with it many lives. Port Royal's history began with the Taino people, who used the area for fishing until the Spanish took control of the region. However, Port Royal's true potential was only realized after the British conquered Jamaica in 1654. They built Fort Cromwell, which was later renamed Fort Charles, and began using Port Royal as a strategic base for privateering operations under Henry Morgan. This quickly turned the city into the region's largest trading port. The disaster of 1692 was a tragic and sudden end to Port Royal's prosperity. The earthquake and subsequent tsunami destroyed most of the city in a matter of minutes, killing 1,600 people and seriously injuring another 3,000. Despite this, the city, which disappeared under the waters, remains one of the most significant archaeological sites. Since the 1950s, archaeologists have discovered many well-preserved artifacts, including everyday objects and even human remains. One of the finds, a pocket watch, made it possible to accurately establish the time of the disaster, 1143. Roman Dodecahedrons Also known as Gallo-Roman Dodecahedrons, these are mysterious artifacts that are small, hollow objects made of cast copper alloy shaped like a regular dodecahedron with 12 flat pentagonal faces. Each face has a circular hole of varying diameters, all leading to an interior cavity. Each corner of the dodecahedron has a protruding knob. These artifacts are dated to the 2nd to 4th centuries AD, but their exact purpose remains a mystery. Roman dodecahedrons have been found in various parts of Europe, primarily in the former Roman Empire, including Gaul and Germania. These objects show little to nowhere and do not contain any inscriptions, numbers, or symbols, making them even more mysterious. Theories about the purpose of the dodecahedrons include that they may have been used to measure something, such as the diameter of coins, as some have been found in coin hoards. However, this remains only a hypothesis. There is another version suggesting that the dodecahedrons could have been religious or ritual artifacts used in rituals or fortune-telling. There is also an opinion that they could have served as objects for games or training. They could also have been parts of a larger mechanical device. Honey in Africa Honey is humanity's oldest sweetener, and for thousands of years it was the only one. Petroglyphs dating back 8,000 to 40000 years have been found on various continents, hinting at the importance of bees and their products. Ancient Egyptian reliefs show evidence of beekeeping as early as 2600 BC. However, until recently, there was no direct archaeological evidence of honey collection in sub-Saharan Africa. A study of chemical food residues on pottery shards has changed this idea. Archaeologists from Goethe University working with chemists from the University of Bristol have discovered traces of beeswax in 3,500-year-old pottery shards belonging to the Nok culture. This culture, which existed in central Nigeria from 1500 BC to the beginning of the Common Era, is known for its terracotta sculptures, the oldest figurative sculpture in Africa. The researchers wanted to understand whether the Nok people domesticated animals or were hunters. However, in the acidic soil conditions typical of the Nok region, animal bones do not survive. So the scientists turned to the analysis of molecular food residues in the pottery. Plant and animal products leave stable chemical compounds, especially lipids, in the pores of clay vessels. Using gas chromatography, these compounds can be detected after thousands of years. The study revealed not only the remains of wild animals, but also components indicating the presence of honeybees. About a third of the examined pottery shards contained high molecular lipids typical of beeswax. This is the first direct evidence of honey use in Africa. It is not yet possible to determine exactly how honey was used. It is possible that the Nok people separated honey from wax by heating. They may also have used honey for cooking, making mead, or for technical and medicinal purposes. It is possible that the clay vessels served as beehives, as is still practiced by some African peoples. Pilot's Stone a very important ancient artifact that confirms the existence of Pontius Pilate, the Roman prefect of Judea, famous for his role in condemning Jesus Christ to crucifixion. This fragment of a limestone block was discovered in 1961 in the ancient Roman theater of Caesarea, Israel, and dates back to the first century AD. The inscription on the stone is partially preserved but contains key information. 
a reference to Pontius Pilate and his title Prefect of Judea. This discovery was significant because until its discovery, there was no archaeological evidence directly related to this historical figure. The Pilate Stone is believed to be the only modern inscription found dating back to Pilate's reign. Its importance lies in the fact that it confirms not only the existence of Pilate, but also the Roman presence in Judea during this period. Communion Set A research project by the National Archaeological Institute made a rare find near Lake Tisa a silver communion set and a hoard of 70 silver coins. These artifacts were discovered at the site of the ruins of a Benedictine abbey discovered in 2023. The silver set, consisting of a bowl and wafer stand, dates from the 14th century and was probably part of a burial. In addition, a treasure of 70 silver coins dating from the 13th and 14th centuries was found by volunteers during excavations. These finds indicate the rich history of the region and its importance in the Middle Ages. The Archaeometric Laboratory continues work on the analysis and restoration of these valuable finds. Artifacts dating from prehistoric times to the present day will provide insight into the history of the region and its role in Hungarian history. The mice ate an important message. Archaeologists sometimes make such amazing discoveries that they are hard to believe. One of the most unusual discoveries was an ancient Greek letter that was eaten by mice. It was written on a wooden tablet and contained an order to kill the messenger. The researchers were never able to prove whether this order was carried out. Letter written between 257 and 248 BC belonged to a man named Ephormostos. He sent it to his brother Zeno. The letter said, Greetings. The letter you wrote to Menon about Calicon's money was eaten by mice. You will do me a favor if you write quickly so that Calicon will not be delayed. Goodbye. The ancient Greeks often wrote letters on various topics. Family stories, news, love letters, political views. Letters were an important means of communication and literary expression. The first mention of writing in Greek literature appeared in Homer's Iliad, where Pratis gives a tablet to Bellerophon. In the 6th century BC, Herodotus describes the correspondence between King Amasis and the tyrant Polycrates. Letters were written with a reed pen and ink on papyrus, which was then rolled up and tied with thread. Official documents were sealed so that only the addressee could open them. In addition to papyrus, metal, wood, beeswax, clay tablets, limestone, or animal skin were used. The earliest Greek writing was written on lead tablets around 500 BC. Rapa Nui Statues Easter Island, located in the southeastern Pacific Ocean at the edge of the Polynesian Triangle, is home to nearly a thousand monumental statues created by the ancient Rapa Nui people. The Moai figures were carved from volcanic tuff in the Rano Raraku Quarry, and many of them remain there today. However, a significant portion of the statues were moved and installed on special stone platforms called Ahu along the coast of the island. The Moai are notable for their disproportionately large heads, which make up about a third of the total height of the statue. These legless monuments range in height from 2 to 10 meters, although the largest unfinished statue remains in the quarry and reaches 21 meters. The Moai were considered the embodiment of ancestral spirits and played an important role in the ritual life of the Rapa Nui people. It is still unclear how exactly the ancient inhabitants of the island moved these giant sculptures across the rugged terrain. There are hypotheses that they used ropes and ingenious technologies to walk the statues to their places of installation. The Moai facing the villages probably symbolized the protection and strength of the ancestors watching over their descendants. The Witch, the Dwarf, and the Magician's Pyramid the ancient Mayan city of Uxmal, located on the Yucatan Peninsula, is a place where unique architecture and ancient mythology merge with otherworldly landscapes. One of the most mysterious structures here is the Pyramid of the Magician, a structure amazing in its shape and significance. This place is surrounded by magical legends, in particular the story of a dwarf and a witch who supposedly built the Magician's Pyramid. This legend exists only in oral retellings of local residents since it is not recorded in ancient texts. Variations of this story are passed down from generation to generation. The story was first recorded in the 19th century by John Lloyd Stevens, an American explorer who published his observations in a book about his travels to the Yucatan. 
One day he heard this story from a local resident. According to legend, in the place where the pyramid now stands, there was once the hut of an old witch who wanted to have an heir. Using magic, she created a childlike creature from the egg. This baby quickly grew to the size of an adult, but remained the size of a dwarf. The witch was proud of him and dreamed that he would become a great ruler. On her instructions, the dwarf challenged the local king to a duel. The tests proposed by the king seemed impossible, but each time the dwarf coped with them using the cunning and magic of his mother. For example, the king demanded that the dwarf build a house taller than all the buildings in the city in one night. By morning, a majestic pyramid rose on the site of the old hut. The final test was that the king and the dwarf had to break wood over each other's heads. The witch prepared her son by placing a protective spell on his head. The king was unable to harm the dwarf, and he in turn took the king's life with his blow. So the dwarf became the new ruler of Uxmal. In some versions of this legend, the dwarf is the god Itzamama, who used magic to build the pyramid. These stories may have emerged as an attempt to explain the unusual shape and structure of the Pyramid of the Magician, which archaeologists believe took three centuries to build. Piri Race Map Created in 1513 by the Ottoman admiral and cartographer Piri Reis, this map is one of the most famous cartographic artifacts of the Age of Discovery. Although only a fragment of the map survives today, it is housed in the Topkapi Palace in Istanbul and was discovered in 1929. The map is of particular interest because it contains a partial copy of a now-lost map by Christopher Columbus, making it an important historical document. The Piri Race map depicts parts of the Atlantic Ocean, including the coasts of Europe, Africa, and South America. It is a remarkably accurate depiction of South America for the early 16th century, as well as details of the Caribbean and the islands of Hispaniola and Cuba. One of the interesting features of the map is that Cuba is depicted as part of the Asian mainland, which is likely due to early misconceptions about the geography of the New World. Another puzzling detail is the southern portion of the map, which has been interpreted as an early version of Terra Australis, a hypothetical southern continent that was believed to exist at the time. This adds further intrigue and debate about the possible sources of information used by Piri Race when compiling the map. Perhaps he relied on older maps or used accounts from sailors of his time, making this artifact even more significant and mysterious to researchers. The discovery created problems with the law. The sword, dating from around 850 AD, sheds light on the turbulent period of conflict between the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings in Great Britain. One day, while exploring the River Cherwell in Oxfordshire, Trevor Penny expected to find metal debris. However, his magnet picked up something else, an ancient Viking sword dating back to around 850 AD. The relic was recovered from the river in November last year, covered with corrosion and deposits. The sword was restored to its original appearance thanks to the joint work of Penny and local archaeologists. The find takes us back to a turbulent time in England's history, when the country became a battlefield between Anglo-Saxon conquerors and Danish Vikings. The era was full of battles, including the Viking raid at Plymouth and their defeat by Anglo-Saxon forces led by King Ethelwolf of Wessex and his son Ethelstan. Penny later faced questions about the legality of using magnets for searching and the ownership of the artifact. Problems arose with the landowner and river trust prohibiting the use of magnets for fishing. To avoid going to jail, Penny agreed to donate the sword to the museum. This raises the question, did the amateur archaeologist really violate any laws, or did the authorities want to take away the ancient artifact in this way? Write your opinion in the comments under the video. 1500-year-old relic Archaeologists from Innsbruck have discovered a rare ivory reliquary in an early Christian church in Irschen, southern Austria. This unique artifact, which is about 1,500 years old, is a box measuring approximately 20 by 30 centimeters, decorated with Christian symbols. A team of archaeologists led by Gerald Grabhair has been excavating the region since 2016. On August 4, 2022, they found the reliquary under the altar in the side chapel of the church. Although the artifact was damaged, researchers were able to identify it as a pyx, a round ivory container richly decorated with Christian motifs. This discovery was the first of its kind in Austria. There are about 40 such chests known throughout the world, and the last one was found about 100 years ago. Most pyx are kept in cathedral treasures or displayed in museums, making this find especially valuable. 
Ivory lying underground absorbs moisture, becomes soft, and is susceptible to destruction. Conservation of the artifact required careful and lengthy drying to prevent shrinkage and cracks. For two years, fragments of the reliquary were preserved for scientific analysis. Researchers are working on a 3D reconstruction of the pics. This process will provide a deeper understanding of the history and significance of this unique find. Eyeliner during excavations at the Yesilova Hoyuk burial mound in Izmir, archaeologists have discovered a beautifully preserved eyeliner tool made of stone. This unique artifact, which is over 8,200 years old, may be the oldest of its kind. The discovery opens up new horizons in understanding the lives of early Aegean settlers of the Neolithic era. Yesilova Hoyuk, located in the Bornova district, is considered the oldest prehistoric settlement in the Izmir region. Unlike central Anatolia, where houses were closely spaced, the inhabitants of Izmir preferred to live in separate dwellings. The discovered artifact resembles a stone pencil used to apply eyeliner. Its tip contains traces of black paint, presumably manganese oxide, a popular ingredient in ancient eyeliner. This 9.5 centimeters long stone applicator is the oldest of its kind. This tool demonstrates that Aegean women 8,200 years ago already paid attention to their appearance. Voynich Manuscript one of the most mysterious manuscripts in history, it is an illustrated codex written in an unknown language or code that has not yet been deciphered. According to carbon analysis of the parchment, its creation dates back to the period between 1404 and 1438. Despite research, its origin, authorship, and purpose remain unsolved, which gives rise to many theories and guesses. The manuscript is named after the Polish antiquarian Wilfred Voynich, who acquired it in 1912. It consists of more than 240 pages with cryptic texts and illustrations that depict bizarre plants, astronomical diagrams, strange people, and unknown chemical processes. The unique language of the manuscript has no analogs, and the font and structure of the text have led to the emergence of many hypotheses. Some scholars suggest that it may be a coded message created using sophisticated cryptography, while others believe that the manuscript is a description of a natural or artificial language. There are theories that the manuscript may have been a hoax, created to confuse scientists and seekers of ancient knowledge. Other versions suggest that it is a scientific or medical reference book, perhaps devoted to alchemy or botany. Some even believe that the Voynich manuscript is a work of speculative fiction or mythopoetry, which is still waiting to be deciphered. Strange Long Stone In the history of archaeology, discoveries occur that are made not only by scientists but also by ordinary people, often completely unexpectedly. Michigan farmer James Bristle stumbled upon an archaeological sensation when he decided to lay a gas pipeline through his ranch. When James started digging, he did not expect any surprises since the soil here was fertile and without stones. But soon the excavator stumbled upon something. Fearing damage to his rental car, the farmer stopped and decided to inspect the obstacle with a shovel. It turned out that it was not a stone, but something smooth and hard. Digging by hand, James soon realized that there was a huge bone in front of him. He called neighbors for help, and soon several more large bones were discovered. At first, no one could say for sure which animal they belonged to. A few hours later, amateur archaeologists dug to the place where the bones were connected into one large skull with tusks. Initially, farmers assumed it was an elephant, but to be sure, they called real scientists from the University of Michigan. Professor Fisher, having arrived at the place, immediately established that these were the remains of a mammoth and in excellent condition. He wanted to take the bones for study, but James refused to give them up, citing laws that allow the landowner to dispose of the finds at his own discretion. As a result, the farmer displayed the remains in his store, attracting tourists and scientists from all over the country and additionally selling his products. These ruins are older than the Egyptian pyramids. Archaeologists have found a mysterious complex from the New Stone Age near Prague, which turned out to be older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. The open medallion, built about 7,000 years ago, may have served as a meeting place for local farmers. Its diameter is approximately 55 meters, which would allow the Leaning Tower of Pisa to be placed inside. 
Miroslav Kraus, director of the excavations, claims that the structure belonged to the pottery culture that existed between 4,900 and 4,400 BC. The first mention of the Venorge Circle appeared in the 1980s when it was partially opened during the laying of communications. Modern excavations have allowed it to be seen in its entirety and have uncovered pottery, animal bones, and stone tools. Analysis of organic remains will help pinpoint the date of construction and possibly link it to a nearby Neolithic settlement. Study of the medallion shows that the culture of its builders spread throughout Central Europe, touching the territories of modern Poland, Germany, and the Czech Republic, where they lived in longhouses that could accommodate up to 30 people. Gobekli Tepe this unique Neolithic complex in Turkey was inhabited between approximately 9,500 and 8,000 BC and belongs to the pre-pottery Neolithic period, making it one of the oldest known megalithic structures. The main feature of Gobekli Tepe are its massive stone pillars arranged in circular structures, which were created long before the advent of cities and agriculture. These stone pillars, up to 6 meters high, are decorated with intricate carvings, which testify to the highly developed culture of their creators. Among the carvings, you can see anthropomorphic figures, images of wild animals such as lions, snakes, and boars, as well as scenes that may have had ritual or symbolic significance. Particularly noteworthy is the fact that the structures of Gobekli Tepe were created by people who had not yet mastered the production of ceramics or the development of agriculture, which destroys traditional ideas about the development of civilizations. Gobekli Tepe was likely used as a ritual center where people gathered to perform religious rites. The discovery gave archaeologists new evidence that the organization of large ritual structures may have preceded sedentary life and agriculture, significantly changing the understanding of the development of ancient societies. Guillotine of Caravaggio's Sanctuary The guillotine was proposed as a humane method of execution by Dr. Joseph Guillotin in 1791. He believed that it would provide a quick and painless decapitation, unlike other methods that could cause long and painful agony due to the lack of skill of the executioner. However, long before the French Revolution, this device was already used in other countries. In Ireland and Scotland, the guillotine was called the Scottish Maid, in France, the Furniture of Justice, and in Italy it was known as the Mandala. In one of the cellars in Italy, in the sanctuary of Santa Maria del Fonte, in the village of Caravaggio, there is a guillotine that predates the French Revolution by more than two centuries. The sanctuary of Santa Maria del Fonte is famous for the legend of the appearance of Saint Mary to the shepherdess on May 26, 1432. Under this monumental structure, there is a corridor divided into five sections. One of them contains a primitive guillotine associated with the legend of the miracle. In 1520, a robber sentenced to death repented and asked Mary for forgiveness. It is said that the guillotine refused to behead him, sparing his life. This is one of the miracles associated with St. Mary. The guillotine in the sanctuary is different from the French one. It is small and primitive. The blade was secured under a heavy log which was released and slid along the guides, decapitating the condemned man. Peaceful People in America the sacred city of Caral Supe, located on a desert terrace in Peru, was discovered by archaeologists in 1948. This ancient city, estimated to be 5,000 years old, is recognized as one of the oldest in the Western Hemisphere and is considered the cradle of civilization in the Americas. The main architectural landmark of Caral is the Pyramid Mayor, almost 30 meters high and the size of four football fields. Built around 2600 BC, it is comparable in age to the ancient pyramids of Egypt. Radiocarbon dating of organic materials confirms that Karal Supe existed at the same time as the Egyptian pyramids. Artifacts found at Karal, such as the Kipu, a system of knots used to store information, indicate a high level of development and influence on subsequent Andean civilizations. Architectural features, including pyramidal structures and elite residences, indicate a complex socio-political organization and a powerful religious ideology. The absence of traces of war, such as fortifications and weapons, indicates the peaceful nature of the society based on trade and pleasure. In 2009, Corral Soup was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its architectural heritage and influence on later Andean civilizations. The Disappearance of the Ancient Civilization 900 years ago, one of the world's largest civilizations, Cahokia, disappeared. 
New research has challenged the old theory that drought and crop failure were the cause. The Cahokia Mounds, located near modern-day St. Louis, were a thriving settlement with a population of about 50000 people. By 1400, the site was deserted, and the reasons for the mass exodus remain a mystery to archaeologists. Archaeologists analyzed the soil of Cahokia, studying the carbon isotopes left behind by plants that grew during the mass exodus. The results showed that the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-13 remained stable. This indicates that there were no significant changes in the local vegetation and does not support the version of crop failure. It is known that the inhabitants of Cahokia were inventive and may have had the skills to irrigate and store crops. They also had a varied diet, including fish, birds, deer, fruits, and nuts, which would have ensured their survival even if some food sources were lost. So why did they abandon Cahokia? Archaeologists suspect it was a long process caused by external factors. To better understand why, scientists plan to create a database of paleobotanical evidence and conduct experiments with growing ancient crops in controlled conditions. Sacsayhuaman This is a majestic fortress located at an altitude of 3,701 meters on the northern outskirts of Cusco, the ancient capital of the Inca Empire in Peru. Built in the 15th century during the reign of the great Sapa Inca Pachacuti and his successors, Sacsayhuaman is considered one of the most outstanding achievements of Inca engineering and architecture. The complex was strategically located to protect Cusco and its inhabitants, as well as to serve as an important ceremonial center. The most impressive feature of Sacsayhuaman is its massive walls built from giant blocks of gray limestone. These boulders, some of which weigh more than 100 tons, were skillfully hewn and fitted with astonishing precision without the use of any mortar. Despite the enormous size and weight of the stones, the joints between them are so tight that not even a knife blade can fit between the blocks. This demonstrates the incredible skills and knowledge of the Incas in the field of construction, which continues to inspire admiration and mystery among scientists and engineers. In addition, the structure of Sacsayhuaman has a zigzag shape, which adds an additional level of complexity to its construction and suggests a deliberate strategic and symbolic significance. The fortress was used not only for defense, but also for religious and state ceremonies, making it an important spiritual and cultural center. Delivery of Messages from the Afterlife Since ancient times, humanity has sought to find a way to communicate with the living who have departed from the world, which has led to the development of many methods and practices. Among them, charlatans inevitably arose, exploiting the grief of those who had lost loved ones. However, along with this, there were those who approached the issue of communication with the other world with pragmatism and rationalism. One such person was William Thomas Steed, a Victorian journalist who delved into spiritualism in London in the 1890s. Steed claimed to have psychic abilities and could receive messages from the dead through so-called automatic writing. Allegedly, his hand is capable of writing a message from the other world. One of his main interlocutors was Julia Ames, an American journalist who died in 1891. Before her death, Julia agreed with her friend Ellen that she would try to contact her from the afterlife. Ellen claimed that she saw Julia at home next to her bed but did not hear her words. This caused Ellen to turn to Steed for help and he offered to use his skills to convey her messages through automatic writing. As a result, Steed wrote the book After Death or Letters from Julia in which he published messages allegedly received from Julia. They described her experiences in the afterlife and gave the idea that the continuation of existence after death is perceived as something natural and continuous, where the soul leaves the physical body but retains its consciousness and self-awareness. After Steed's death on the Titanic in 1912, his daughter Estella claimed that a family friend, Woodman, also began receiving messages from her father via automatic letter. Woodman allegedly conveyed Steed's impressions of his post-death experiences, describing his experience of death as a strange journey to a new place filled with light and peace. These reports suggest that automatic writing may not only be the product of trance or unconscious activity, but also a real way of communicating with another dimension. The Sea of Galilee Boat Also known as the Jesus Boat, this is an ancient fishing vessel dating back to the first century AD. This unique artifact was discovered in 1986 on the northwestern shore of the Sea of Galilee in Israel, when a drought had caused the water level to drop significantly. 
The boat is 8.2 meters long, 2.3 meters wide, and has a preserved height of 1.3 meters, making it typical of the type of vessel used for fishing and possibly transporting people and goods across the Sea of Galilee in ancient times. Despite its nickname, the Jesus Boat, there is no direct evidence that this boat was associated with Jesus Christ or his disciples. However, the find has important historical and cultural significance, as it dates back to the period when, according to the Gospels, Jesus and his disciples were preaching in the area around the Sea of Galilee. The boat may have belonged to local fishermen, and similar vessels were used for everyday life in those days. The vessel was built from different types of wood, indicating that it had been repaired many times in an attempt to maintain its seaworthiness. This is one of the rarest archaeological finds, allowing us to look into the lives and customs of the ancient people who lived on the shores of the Sea of Galilee during the early Christian era. The Mysterious Pictish Ring a surprising find has recently been discovered on the coast of Scotland, a ring that is about 1,000 years old. But it was not a professional archaeologist who found it, but a 68-year-old former engineer, John Ralph, who was simply looking for something to do in retirement. Having joined the excavations at Berghead, John enthusiastically began participating in the project, where he has already worked on three different sites. The excavation site is a former settlement of the Picts, one of the most important peoples of Scotland, who existed from 500 to 1000 AD. At first, John found only stones and other small items that experts did not consider particularly valuable. But one day, while cleaning the floor of an ancient building, he noticed a metal pin, and next to it, the very ring. Despite being in the ground for thousands of years, the ring still sparkled, and even its details were visible. The Picts, known as the Painted Ones because of their tattoos, were powerful warriors who successfully resisted the invasions of the Romans and the Angles. They played a key role in the formation of Scotland, but by the end of the first millennium, they suddenly disappeared from history, merging with another people, the Gales. Therefore, the discovered ring is not just a decoration, but an important historical artifact that can shed light on the mysterious culture of the Picts. Took the Weapon to the Grave while excavating an ancient burial site in Ostrowiec County, Poland, archaeologists discovered two graves that likely belonged to Vandal warriors. The cemetery, located near the town of Glinka, dates back to the 3rd to 4th centuries AD and is part of a larger site associated with the Przeworsk culture, a group that flourished in central and southern Poland during the Iron Age. The team excavated pit graves containing cremated remains and evidence of burial hearths. The graves are thought to be associated with the Vandals, a Germanic tribe that once inhabited part of what is now southern Poland. Known for their conflict with the Roman Empire, the Vandals eventually created a kingdom that spanned parts of North Africa and several Mediterranean islands. In 455 AD, under the leadership of King Geyseric, they carried out the famous sack of Rome, hastening the fall of the Roman Empire. Along with the remains, archaeologists found weapons and grave goods that indicate high-ranking warriors, including swords, shield fragments, iron spearheads, and pieces of baked clay vessels. Burn marks on these objects indicate that they were burned on a pyre along with the bodies as part of a burial ritual. Interestingly, both swords found in the graves were bent, a common practice in the Przeworsk culture. This could symbolize the warriors taking their weapons to the afterlife, or perhaps the swords were deformed to make the weapons unusable and thus deter potential grave robbers. Tarim Mummies in the Tarim Desert, located in western China, perfectly preserved mummies have been discovered that are over 4,000 years old. These mummies are striking in their condition, preserved due to the dry climate of the region. Chinese archaeologists cannot believe this because they have Caucasian features, which raises many questions about the migrations and cultural exchanges of ancient peoples. Research has shown that the mummies have high cheekbones, deep eye sockets, and blonde hair, which is not typical for the population of this region. These findings cast doubt on previous theories that the Tarim Basin was inhabited exclusively by Asian peoples. DNA tests have confirmed the mixed origins of these people, pointing to complex migration routes connecting east and west already in ancient times. The mummies were found in a variety of burials, many of which contained rich funerary gifts including textiles, weapons, and household items. The Tarim Desert mummies continue to be studied by scientists from all over the world, revealing more and more new aspects of ancient history. They are an archaeological phenomenon.
Remains of a Mammoth in Kyrgyzstan On June 2nd, a tusk and fragments of the lower jaw of a mammoth were discovered in the floodplain of the Jurgalan River in the Issykul region of Kyrgyzstan. Archaeologists who arrived at the request of the Ministry of Culture found that the fragments were located at a depth of 3, 5 meters and at a distance of 140, 150 meters from each other. Due to the poor state of preservation of the bones, archaeologists took extra care to ensure their preservation, as bones deteriorate quickly when exposed to sunlight. Specialists were able to extract only part of the skull, which was cleaned and preserved on site. The discovery of remains in two different locations in the same quarry indicates that the area is promising for future finds. Officials called on citizens to ensure the safety of historical and cultural heritage sites and report findings to archaeologists. Oldest Burial Site in Malaysia Archaeologists have discovered more than a dozen ancient burial sites in Malaysia that are up to 16000 years old. The finds were made in the Ningiri Valley about 215 kilometers north of Kuala Lumpur. These caves may soon be flooded to create a reservoir for a hydroelectric dam planned for 2027. If this happens, 20 square miles of land will be underwater. Most of the skeletons found belong to the pre-Neolithic culture of the region. Some scientists associate this culture with the Hoa Bin hunter-gatherers known for their distinctive stone tools found throughout Southeast Asia. They are also believed to have used wild plants, many of which became the basis for the region's modern flora. Archaeologists found 16 skeletons in 13 caves at four different sites. Most of them were buried in a squatting position, which is typical of the pre-Neolithic period. However, one of the skeletons was buried in an extended position and is approximately 6,000 years old. In addition to the skeletons, over 71000 artifacts were discovered, including stone tools, pottery, and jewelry. One of the key finds was a complete human skeleton in the Gua Keladung Ketchel Cave, which is approximately 14000160000 years old. It is the oldest and most complete skeleton ever found in Malaysia. The burial items included stone tools, crystals, and hematite minerals. Graubal Man one of the most famous and best-preserved bog bodies found in Europe. This body was found in 1952 in a peat bog near the village of Graubale in Jutland, Denmark. The find dates back to the late 3rd century BC during the early Germanic Iron Age. Remarkably, due to the unique preservative properties of bogs, the body was preserved in amazingly good condition. Even after more than two millennia, the skin, hair, nails, and some internal organs were preserved. Graubal Man was a man of about 30 years old, about 1.75 meters tall. Analysis of the remains showed that his death was violent. His throat was cut, which may indicate a ritual sacrifice. Such finds are often associated with ancient religious practices in which bogs played the role of sacred places. After the murder, his body was thrown into a bog, where it remained virtually untouched for over 2,000 years due to the acidic environment, low temperatures, and lack of oxygen preventing decomposition. Graubal Man has become an important archaeological find, providing unique insight into the life and culture of ancient Scandinavian people. Write in the comments, what you think are the most important archaeological discoveries in human history that I missed. What else should I have told you about in this video? And if you like this video, then I will make a part two. Thank you for watching to the end. Bye everyone.